Shalom. Today we're going to start a new series discussing Kabbalism. And uh, we think this is important for several reasons. Kabbalism has permeated traditional biblical Judaism, and most Jews do not recognize the difference between Kabbalistic practice and biblical practice. Not to mention the fact that as many uh, people come into messianic understanding, it is quite easy if you will just stick with the Bible and see what is in there and what is not in there. But there is a tendency for people to look into Judaism and Jewish things and adopt some of those things without careful consideration. And uh, as I said, even some uh, traditional Jewish people do not know the difference between what is biblical and what is from Kabbalah. Kabbalism has been widespread by the Hasidic movement and probably of all the people that we relate to with their um, happy dancing and exuberant singing and desire for Messiah, many Messianics really can relate to um, the Hasidic people. But in fact, they, uh, all their practice is full of Kabbalism. Kabbalism is Gnosticism. We're going to be reviewing the same ideas over and over. One of the main tenets of Gnosticism is that matter is evil, and the goal is to liberate the soul in order to unite it with God. Now, the fact is that you are made of matter, and you need to learn how to live in a state of matter in order to be united with God. This is uh, not my idea. This is God's idea. And in fact, he sent his son in the flesh, in the shape of matter, so that uh, he could teach us more and more about how to live in this world, in the state that we're in. Just for some background, Kabbalah is theosophy. Theosophy is a philosophy concerning or investigation seeking direct knowledge of presumed mysteries of being in nature particularly concerning the nature of divinity. So we are uh, Kabbalists or Theosophists are looking for a direct connection with uh, the, the mysteries of God through their practices. They seek to understand the mysteries of the universe and the bonds that unite the universe, humanity, and the divine. Uh, there are definitely mysteries. I'm not saying that it's wrong to look into these mysteries. We definitely want to understand as much about God and, and the divine as we can. But as far as Kabbalah and theosophy is concerned, there is always a hidden knowledge or wisdom which offers the individual enlightenment and salvation. So this is very different than biblical teaching. One of the foundational ideas in Gnosticism is that the physical world has been created by a lesser God without the permission of a transcendent God. If you have heard anything about the uh, greater and lesser Yahweh controversies, this is uh, the center of this problem. To counter the work of the lesser God, the greater God instilled in mankind a soul, which is considered to be a spark of light. If you know anything about Kabbalah, this should sound familiar to you. The spark of light longs to escape the demise of the current world and ascend to the world of the kingdom of light. Unfortunately, in uh, other Gnostic uh, theories and practices, the lesser God is actually yud heh vav -Heh of the Bible. He's considered to be the lesser God. And the greater God is uh, Lucifer because he is the one that brings the light. That should always uh, trigger something in your mind when you hear about the light bringer. This is Lucifer. 
So Yahweh is painted to be this evil God who created matter and we're trapped in matter. And Lucifer is coming to bring you the light so you can escape your problem. The means of escaping the physical world are many, but they are all based on the secret knowledge gained through various forms of meditation and study. One of the things we will be encountering over and over again in this study is the idea that the knowledge is secret or hidden. In many Gnostic systems, the various emanations of God, who is also known by such names as the One, the Monad, Ain Telios, the Bethos, the Proarchi, the Archi, Sophia, the Christos, which is the Anointed One, as you know, all these beings are called Aeons. And in different systems, these emanations are differently named, classified, and described, but the emanation theory itself is common to all forms of Gnosticism. So you might be a Kabbalist if you believe in these emanations, and um, maybe this word is familiar to you. There is an idea that you believe that you can know nothing of the transcendent God, which in Kabbalism is called Ein Sof. Ein Sof means without end. The only way you can know him is through his emanations. These are called spherot, um, variously spelled with an F or a PH or uh, an apostrophe. Through this spherot is the only way you can know him. And I expect you're familiar with this picture. This is a picture of the spherot. Please understand that I certainly believe that all these qualities are part of God, uh, Bina, understanding, Chachma, wisdom, dot, knowledge, chesed, uh, loving kindness, Gabura, strength, all these things are part of God. But the way to know God is not through studying this kind of a chart. In fact, God told you not to make any representation of himself. This chart is a representation of what people think God is about. This is a Kabbalistic chart. You can meditate on this chart all day, but Yeshua said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. So it's just a different way of educating, understanding how to go about becoming uh, in contact with the Father by praying to the Father, not by meditating on these various uh, charts and so on. So the idea of the emanations is part of Kabbalah. It's also part of Gnosticism, as we've already seen. There is a belief in Kabbalah that the infinite God had to limit himself to make room for a finite creation. And this is called, in Hebrew, tzimtzum. It's an idea of withdrawing. It is a spiritual practice among uh, Jewish mystics that they lock themselves away and uh, try and have this special communication with with the father by understanding what he went through when he uh, did um, when he created the heavens and the earth I'm not saying that when Yeshua came to earth that there was not some limitation that he had to accept on himself because he became a part of finite creation. Definitely, it tells us in Scripture that he did. He had to limit himself in a body and in flesh and blood. But this is not part of the creation of the heavens and the earth. The Bible is clear. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. There's nothing there about him having to uh, limit himself and make a space so that heaven and earth could exist. God is outside time. He is outside our dimensions. And if he creates something in our dimensions, that doesn't limit him in any way. Uh, it is good to get away in prayer and fasting, but it is more likely that you will find out about who you are when you do that than you find out about who Yahweh is. Part of Kabbalistic belief is that um, it is a human being, the man's job, to find pieces of the shattered self of God and put them back together. The shattered pieces, or the action of the shattering is called shvira, 
the uh, pieces are called shvura, the, the shattered pieces. Uh, God did not have to break himself up in order to make you and creation and anything else. God is outside of the dimensions of where we live. And he made the world for, uh, for a specific purpose. The idea of putting the world back together again is very common in, in Jewish mysticism. It's called tikkun or tikkun olam. Tikkun means repair. Olam means the world. Tikkun olam. Uh, my guess is that you're having enough trouble uh, putting your own life together than um, trying to put the rest of the world back together. The Bible says all things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. In one translation it says all things hold together. Uh, we cannot put the universe together. It's very clear that the Father is in charge of the restoration of all things, and Even the greatest scientists are trying to figure out what holds everything together and how they can put things together, and they don't know. God is the one who holds all things together, and he is responsible for the restoration of all things. The, the creation has been groaning since the fall. The Father will come and fix that problem. Kabbalah is dualism. And I guess probably you're familiar with this sign, symbol. Uh, it speaks of the balance of things. Feminine and masculine, good and evil, things like that. So there is a belief in Kabbalism that God has a feminine half. And man, the human being's good works, help to unite the masculine with the feminine. First of all, it's very clear that uh, that God is masculine, that the Father is masculine, otherwise he wouldn't be the Father. Uh, in Yahweh, God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Every Old Testament verb referring to yud heh vav -Heh, Elohim, is in the masculine. It's very easy to see it in the Hebrew language. It is in the masculine. God is our Father. The whole idea of the balance is reflected in the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which uh, we were forbidden to eat from it. For in the day that we eat of it, we shall surely die. Now, uh, Adam and Eve already committed this sin, and we inherit a spiritual genetic. The best thing we can do is to back off from eating from that tree and eat from the Torah, which is the tree of life. Yes, there is good and evil in the world, but it is not to our highest benefit to study those things. Our highest benefit is to study Torah and see how is righteousness defined. I just want to uh, mention some Christian fairy tales that perhaps you are familiar with that are all about the fight between good and evil. I want to tell you that a witch cannot teach you anything about Torah, and there are witches in all those books. Again, the idea that your body is unnecessary and the only important thing in life is the life of the spirit. It is written, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, that is completely, not so that you're sanctified wholly, H-O-L-Y, but holy, you are totally sanctified. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Yeshua, the Messiah. I've done an extensive study on the body, soul, and spirit, which is elsewhere. And if you would like a copy of that, please contact me. The point is, you have to be all of you together, or you'll be somebody else. If you don't have a body... You can't be in fellowship with the Lord in the dimension in which we live. Kabbalism, again, has the idea that there is secret knowledge needed for divine enlightenment. 
On the other hand, Yeshua said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. We need to be studying who he is and remaining in relationship with him in order to have understanding. Kabbalah is mysticism. The uh, Kabbalah began as a trying to, uh, to harmonize Greek philosophy with scripture. And so the result was the understanding that it is given only to a select few to lift the veil and discern beneath the letter of the Bible. Mysticism depends on what you do and how you feel. I want to take just a minute to talk about the Western education system. There is something which is now called Common Core, and before that it was called Goals 2000, No Child Left Behind, and before that it had another name, uh, School to Work. This has been a program that has been uh, being implemented in uh, especially an American education system for probably close to a hundred years. The idea is the shift from the cognitive domain to the affective domain. So many of the things that we're seeing in popular culture are having that shift. We, uh, our cognitive domain is where we figure things out, where we have understanding. Our affective domain is how we feel. And there has been a deliberate shift in the education system towards the affective domain about how we feel about things. The younger you are, the probably more affected you have been by the education system. And, and people have been trained to go by how they feel about things rather than reasonable logic. And so what I'm saying is that the generations are becoming more and more susceptible to these mystical ideas. So one of the things you might believe is that you have to correct yourself to become like the Creator and that is equivalent to being saved by works. Yes, we need to be like our Creator but we need to live by his spirit in order to be like him. We cannot adopt some external display to prove that we are like our creator. We must be changed from the inside by him. Because it is by grace that you are saved through faith, and that is not of yourselves. It is a gift from God. Another thing that uh, is a common belief is that your good works will hasten the coming of Messiah. There's one teaching that if every Jew in the world would keep two Sabbaths perfectly in a row, two weeks in a row, that Messiah would come. The Bible teaches that no man know the hour or uh, the day of the coming of Messiah, not even the angels in heaven, but only the Father. I'm not saying that we don't know the season of his coming because that's not in here, but the day, the hour, the very year of his coming, we don't know. Only the Father knows that. It is also written that the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but he is long-suffering to toward us and not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So he gives us a huge measure of time before... Yeshua returns. Kabbalah is a cult. Again, the whole idea that there are, that there's a hidden knowledge, the occult spirit is kind of a need to know spirit. I've already talked other places about how this has infected the Messianic Hebrew roots movement. According to the Bible and according to his divine power, he hath given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. We have everything that we need. There's nothing that has to be hidden uh, or discovered for us to live a godly life. Again, another common belief, the only way to truly know and understand God is through studying things which are hidden. On the other hand, it is written, there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, 
neither hid that shall not be known. Everything that is in the dark will come to the light. One of the things that is uh, foundational is that this esoteric, the secret knowledge, is only for some people to study. It's not for everybody. Yeshua said, suffer little, the little children and forbid them not to come unto me, for such is the kingdom of heaven. The gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then the end shall come. So there's nothing secret, there's nothing esoteric, it is all out there for everyone to understand. Another belief is that Jews, who are Jews by biology, are the holiest of all people. Then there's a set of people who convert to Judaism, they're the second most holy. And then the Gentiles are the least holy. Perhaps you already know some believers in Yeshua who have made what is considered to be a messianic conversion. The Bible says that in Messiah, in Messiah there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond or free, but Messiah is all and in all. Wait, wait, there is a conversion. Yeshua said, Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. It's not about joining up with a religious system. There are a few more uh, things, practices that I would like to touch on that are from Kabbalah. One is the belief of what is called the transmigration of souls, which is reincarnation, including coming back as an inanimate object like a rock. Uh, there are common stories about rabbis of old who have released souls from their incarnation as a rock or something else. The Bible has written, it is appointed for uh, the man to die once and then the judgment. There is no transmigration. There is no reincarnation. Perhaps you believe that you receive an extra sh soul on Shabbat so that you can enjoy the Shabbat more. This is called Nishama Yetera, uh, an extra soul. It is written in Isaiah how you can enjoy the Shabbat. If you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on the holy day, the day that is holy to the Father, to Yahweh, and call Shabbat a delight, the holy day of Yahweh. You call it honorable, and you honor him, not doing your own things, not finding your own pleasure or speaking your own words. Then you shall delight yourself in Yahweh, and he will cause you to ride upon the high places of the earth and feed you with the heritage of Jacob, your father, for the mouth of Yahweh has spoken it. It is something you do by your will, you don't have to wait for God to give you some uh, fantasy extra soul so that you can enjoy Shabbat better. There is a song as part of the Kabbalah Shabbat service on Friday evening, which is called Lecha Dodi. And it is traditional to turn around and bow during the last verse to welcome the Sabbath bride. I have seen this done even in uh, Messianic conferences and Hebrew roots conferences simply because the people were ignorant. Somebody was leading a service. Somebody said, at this point, you turn around and you bow down to the Sabbath bride. The song L'Chadodi has a lot of beautiful imagery from Isaiah about the bride. But the point is, you are the bride. The Sabbath is not the bride. You are the bride. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show you the bride, the Lamb's wife. There's a lot of uh, language in Ephesians 5, which talks about the relationship of Messiah to the body as being the relationship between a husband and a bride. You are the bride. The Sabbath is not the bride. I suppose there were many other things I could have talked about. I just wanted to touch on this today. 
And I pray that you would keep your eyes in your Bible to read what is truth and understand what is truth and not truth, uh, how to walk in this world while you're walking. Keep your eyes on the sky. Your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom. <laughs> Da 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 da